one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. In our gospel lesson today, we find Jesus on his way to a dinner party with a group of Pharisees. Now, I know what you're thinking. The Pharisees? The, the same Pharisees who've been consistently trying to trap Jesus? The same Pharisees who, who had it in for Jesus? The same Pharisees who would eventually succeed in their plot to have Jesus executed? Those Pharisees? Yep, those Pharisees. These are people who just couldn't seem to wait to see Jesus fall from grace. These are the people who, who had it out for Jesus almost as soon as he started his ministry. The whole time, these are, are people who couldn't stand Jesus. So one of the lead Pharisees invites Jesus over for dinner. And wait, again, he invites Jesus over for dinner? Not usually what you do with people you don't like, is it? I wonder why Jesus got the invitation. Was it because he was a rising star in the rabbi world? Was it because of general curiosity? Maybe the, the jury was still out on that Jesus guy. Was he one of them or not? This would be a really good way to find out. Our gospel writer then reports that the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely. Of course they were. After his recent healing of a woman on the Sabbath, I would imagine that they really, really were watching him closely. Perhaps they might have been conflicted. I mean, a miracle healing doesn't happen every day. But religious leaders also don't go around breaking God's laws every day either. It's hard to say what the Pharisees were expecting to happen. But I imagine that they knew that fireworks would likely be involved. And so Jesus comes to dinner. But instead of saying thank you for the invitation or making polite conversation, he insults both the guests and the host. And he does this because as the Pharisees were choosing their seats, he saw that each one was trying to get as high up in the seating chart as possible, stepping over each other for the places of power. And so Jesus decides to serve up an appetizer of his own in the form of a parable. Jesus said, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. He goes on to say that if something like this happened, it's likely that the host would ask you to give up your seat. Then in disgrace, you would have, you'd have to make your way down to the lowest place on the table. Now this here, this statement, I, I'm pretty sure that Jesus' words right here sucked the air out of that room. Okay, right, so after his verbal assault on pretty much everyone present except for those who were serving the dinner, here's where I think things get really interesting. Jesus walks over to the host, maybe puts a hand on his shoulder and, and gives a hard lesson for everyone to hear about who we welcome to the table. And perhaps, perhaps that right there is the lesson for us here today. If we were able to look at the guest list uh, for the dinner party in our gospel lesson, I, I'm sure it would have been the who's who of religious and political elites, but Jesus challenged his host and anyone within earshot regarding who should get an invite to the table. Jesus said, 
to not invite your friends or relatives or, or your rich neighbors, but instead invite the people who are consistently pushed to the margins. Invite the people whom society has forgotten about. Invite the people who are ignored. Invite the people who are persecuted. In other words, invite, include, welcome, and affirm the people who the church has failed for generations. I wonder, you know, I, I really do. I wonder if the message Jesus was really getting at here, the, the message that Jesus really wanted to get across was about who we invite into our lives, that is to say, who we welcome to our tables. And you see, that question, that question is one we should all be asking ourselves, especially in our churches. You see, each and every week, each and every week, there is a feast of new and unending life prepared on this table right here. Yes, each and every week, each and every week, we here at St. Barnabas host a banquet. Arguably the most important meal of the week. And you thought that was breakfast. And so who is invited? Who are we inviting to this table? Well, we, we like to say that everyone is invited. Okay. Well, the next question, I think, then, is, well, who is welcome at our table? In the Episcopal Church, we like to say that all people are welcome. But are they? Are they? Are they really? Because the, the next question we need to ask ourselves, I think, is who's missing from our table? And why aren't they here? Who's missing from our table and why aren't they here? Is there more that we could be doing? Are we inviting people to our table? Are we welcoming those who, who may not look like us or, or talk like us or, or be the same age as us or, or come from the same backgrounds we come from or who shop at the same grocery stores we do? Who are the people that God is calling you to invite to the banquet at his table? These are hard questions. But they're hard questions that I think we really need to be asking ourselves. If we truly, you see, believe that, that salvation is found in Christ Jesus, if we truly believe that all people are welcome at this table, if we truly believe that Christ is calling us into diverse and beautiful community, how are we showing it? How will people know? We are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that our unity will one day be restored, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. They will know we are Christians by the way in which we treat one another. They will know we're Christians by the way we work together to further the mission of God's love in the world. You know what doesn't show people that we are Christians? Divisions. 
You see the way in which we live into our commitments to this community, the, the ways in which we live into our commitments to each other, the ways in which we treat other people should be radically and shockingly different because you see the ways of Jesus are radically and shockingly different. The Holy Spirit does not sow division. The Holy Spirit does not sow division because you see the Holy Spirit is always including, always inviting, always affirming, always finding ways to love and welcome people to this table. And the Holy Spirit is always guiding us toward finding unity and, and, and common ground in Christ Jesus. We cannot let the things of the world divide us. Because you see, there is important work to do. There are people in this world who need to know the unfathomable grace and, and mercy and forgiveness and love of God. There's too much work. There's, there's too much kingdom work for us to do. Because people today, you see, people out in this world today need the church more now than ever. People today need to know and experience the love of God in their lives now more than ever. Look around you. There's plenty of room in God's church for all sorts of people. But they'll never know. And they'll never come. Unless we invite them. You see, we're called to invite all people to this table. Did you know that 80% of people who go to church say that they are there because a friend invited them? And you know what? I'll bet a good portion of that 80% probably felt like they didn't belong. That they weren't the, the typical church person. That they weren't Pharisees. Well, you know what? Good. Because I think we already have enough Pharisees in the church. Probably a few too many, myself included. What's amazing, though, is that, that it's not even too late for us Pharisees. Jesus actually told the Pharisees in our gospel lesson today, today to go and invite the outcasts, the, the people who probably felt like they didn't fit in, the people who the church has failed. I don't know if it worked. I guess in a way, maybe it did. I mean, I'm standing here. And trust me when I say that, that if I'm here, there's plenty of room for people in God's church. My siblings in Christ, the way of his grace is different. The way of his love is different. The way of the cross is different. The way of the resurrection is different. And as a result, the, the people, the people who are called to this table should be different. We need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to his church because, you see, God is doing a new thing. God is always doing a new thing, and, and God is inviting us into that new thing. You see, God is doing a new thing here at St. Barnabas, and we're being called to join with God in that new thing. You see, we always need to be careful, though, because it's awfully easy to uninvite people to the table. It's awfully easy to, to sow division and not unity. It, it's even easier to ignore the people out there who, who don't have a seat at the table. Most of the time, we look around and we don't even realize who's missing. Most of the time, we don't even realize who doesn't feel invited, who, who doesn't feel welcome. For those of us in the church, without knowing it, it's awfully easy to act like a Pharisee. 
May we all instead choose Jesus. May we choose the leading of the Holy Spirit. May, may we choose to love one another and may we choose to invite and welcome all people to this table, to our banquet. As we carry the torch of this church into the future.